Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last tutorial we went over the thought process behind creating this win conditions actor here. And today we're going to go in and actually script our first win condition. Alright, so let's double click in here. And the first thing I want to do is create a function. So we're going to go over here and add a function and we'll call this coin win. And what we want this function to do is basically tell us when we've collected all of our coins. So we're going to add one input to it. This is going to say current coins. And we'll make this an integer. And we'll give it one output. And this output is going to be a boolean of whether or not we won or not. So we'll just say win and change this to a boolean. Now we're going to leave this for now, and we'll come back to it in a little bit. We'll go into the event graph, and we'll right click, and we'll create an event for on begin play. And what we want to do is collect, um, basically calculate the total coin value of this level. So we're going to need to make a variable here, and we'll call it coin level and we'll leave this as a boolean and what we're going to do off of begin play is we'll have a branch and we'll have this branch check if we're playing a coin level if we are then we're going to want it to get all actors of class and we want our coin class And then this creates an array of all of our coin actors, and we want to loop through that. So for each loop, and we'll hook these two up. And now out of our coin actors, for each coin actor, we want to get coin value. And then we want to add this, add integer plus integer. And we want to add this to what our total score the total coin value of this level is going to be. So we'll right click here and promote to variable and we'll say total coins and we'll compile this and make sure the default value over here is zero and then we want to drag out from total coins and hold alt to be able to set it. Now we can come back into our coin win. And what we want to do is compare our current coins, let's say equal total coins. And then we'll have a branch. So if you just hold B on the keyboard and click, you can create a branch node. And we will hook these up like that. And the last thing we want to do in this function is we want to be able to change this boolean based on whether or not this is true. So we can right click here and we'll create a local variable. And I'm going to make this local because we really don't need to change this variable outside of this function. So a local variable won't be um, available, you can't cast to it, you can't get it from anywhere else but within this function. So we will make this a local variable and we'll call it did win. And off of true, so we'll drag this out, hold alt, control C, control V. And if it's true, we want to check this box like that. And if it's false, we will just leave it as is. And what this allows us to do is it takes, every time we run this function, the function will be able to tell us if we won or not. And if we want to script some more logic after that, we'd be able to do that. So we'll compile and save. And now we will open up our widget. So you remember the widget was holding our score here. And in our graph, the widget has this function add score. This is where our score actually changes. So it makes sense that every time we call this function, we'd also want to call the function in our win conditions. But in order to do that, we need to get a reference to our win conditions, just like we did here with the player reference. So we'll go to our event graph, and we will slide these over. And right after we 
um, construct our widget and we cast to our third person and get that reference, we will say get all actors of class. And this time, we want to look for our win conditions. And because there's only one actor of that in the level, we don't need to use a loop. We can just say get and go here to get a copy. And this will be our one actor. So we'll right click here and promote that to a variable and call this win conditions reference. And we'll hook this up like that. Now we have a reference to our win conditions actor. So we can go back into this function for add score. We can pull out our win conditions reference. And we can now call the coin win function. And you see, because we made an input here, it saves us from having to reference our player character from the win conditions blueprint. We can now just feed the score of the player directly into this. If you double click on any one of these execution pins or colored lines, you can create what's called a reroute node. It just helps keep your blueprint nice and clean when it gets more complicated. So this is the same value as what's in here. And we're just going to feed that right into our function. And then afterwards, you see it has this boolean here of whether or not we won. So we can come off of here and create a branch node. And then we can do different things based on whether this is true or not. So if it is true, just for fun, we will say spawn emitter. And this is totally just to mess around. We will put a little explosion here. And I'm going to get our player reference and say get actor location. And we will plug this location in here. We'll compile and save this. And we'll go into our event graph. And this is purely cosmetic. I'm just adding a delay node here because when I did this before, the explosion was actually starting right off the bat because um, the win conditions, you see this part of the win conditions event graph is what sets the total coin score, and that hasn't fired yet by the time the widget is doing this. So it actually thinks the total value is zero, and that equals the player's current value, and then you have a little explosion. So we're just going to delay this a little bit. Now, if we minimize this, and we go into our level, the last thing we need to do is click on our win conditions here and make sure that we, oh, let's go back into the win conditions, make this coin level right here um, public. And what that does is it allows us to change whether or not we're in a coin level from the editor. So we'll compile that again and save. And now you'll see here in our win conditions we have this coin level box and right now it's false. We want to make sure that's true because we are in a coin level. Now we will save and hit play. And once we collect our four coins, you guys will see we'll have a nice little explosion and that will signify that we have completed the level. And there you have it. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And in the next tutorial, we'll be adding some more functionality to our little game here. Alright guys, see you later.